Here we are. We made it. We made it to Friday. Friday, Friday. The girl used to sing about Fridays, man. She used to think about Fridays, how great they were. Finally made it to Friday. Friday we wear red. You know we do. This is my new, the new Fredericksburg Nationals, our single-A baseball team right here in town. Your, your friend George Washington with an axe there ready to swing at a baseball. A cup of coffee's in a Boston cup today because, you know, it's, it's Boston. Boston. The car in the park. Richard is here. Good, good morning, Richard. Good to see you. Good to see you. Beautiful day out. It's Juneteenth. Made a federal holiday yesterday here in the D.C. area. Everybody's already off today. Uh, the federal government shut down today. The good holidays. Fastest holiday probably I've ever seen created, I guess. Probably the only holiday I've seen. Only federal holiday I've seen created, I guess. Uh, Rainier's here. Good morning, Rainier. Good to see you. Today we're going to talk about AC5, separation of duties. This is a quick one. One control, no enhancements, straightforward. One of the important ones, though. It's an important control, and that's why we're gonna that's why we're gonna cover it. Today, cop aside, we'll give you the intro and we'll be right back to it. Separation duty is important. This is that control. It's, it's a short control. It's a quick control. Not a lot to it. Not a lot to assessing it. But it's important. It's important control. It keeps, keeps people and functions separated so they can't do bad things and hide themselves. Right? We'll talk about that a little bit. We'll talk about where it came from outside of security uh, after we talk about a little PowerPoint. So let's jump in to the PowerPoint and take a look at this thing. Separation of duties. This is uh, 853 revision five controls. We're talking about the baseline controls. That's controls that are in the high, the moderate, or the low baseline or included for privacy reasons in the baselines as defined by 853B. Um, and that's the baseline document. So the separation of duties, uh, AC5. So let's jump in. If we look at the uh, first page of our baseline controls, this is right here. AC5 separation of duties is included in the moderate and the high baseline, not in the low, and it's not a privacy control. So that makes it only available or only required in the baseline, in the initial baseline for high and moderate systems. Obviously, organizations can add it whenever they want, and they can tailor it out should they think they need to. So we talked about the discussion now. You know, as I, as you guys know, I always move the discussion up front. We talk about the discussion, and then we talk about the control. Then we'll talk about the assessment of the control. That's how the show goes. So discussion, separation of duty addresses the potential for abuse of authoriz authorized privileges and helps reduce the risk of malevolent activity without collusion. Important. Separation of duty includes dividing missions or business functions and support functions among different individuals or roles, as long as those roles belong to different people. Uh, conducting system support functions with different individuals and ensuring that security personnel who administer access control functions do not also uh, administer audit functions. And really what we're talking about is if you have a system administrator that is creating accounts, for example, you don't want that person to be the same one that reviews the audit logs of those that account creation. If the person that creates accounts also audits the logs, it's possible for them to create an account and then go into the logs and remove the log that that's been the, the log action that that account's been created. So they could create them selves a an administrator account that will give them backdoor privileges should uh, you know should they get fired or something like that. So we always want to separate these accounts, these functions. So the person that that creates the account should not be the same person that is auditing account creation. That separates those two duties. Now what we talk about here is without collusion. And that means these two people could get together, the, the system administrator 
and the auditor could get together and they could decide to do some nefarious things to the system. But with AC5, we talk about separating duties where it reduces the risk of malevolent activity without collusion. So the, the fact of collusion, that still exists. So we gotta watch out for that too. So we do other things. We layer our defense like we talked about to protect it. So as we go on the discussion a little bit further, we talk about because separation of duty violations can span system and application domains, organizations consider the entirety of systems and some system components when developing policy on separation of duties. Separation of duties in, is enforced through the account management activities we talked about in AC2, and the access control mechanisms we talked about in AC3, and identity management activities that we will talk about in IA2, 4, and 12. So what we're talking about here is just, we have to think about the entirety of the domain, the, the security domain that we're talking about. So if it's a system we're talking about, we want to talk about the entire system. Can we separate these duties across the entirety of the system? Well, that's important. We want to make sure that we're separating these duties because if we have someone that can create these accounts or do security functions and then also cover their tracks, that can lead to bad things, right? So here's how the control looks. We identify and document, and that's we got our first organizationally defined variable. And it's an assignment organizationally find duties of individuals requiring separation and so they document it the first part and then we define system access authorizations to support uh, separation of duties right so in my case I'm gonna draw a big line here and I'm gonna say here in my fake system we identify and document system and network and audit functions and define system access authorizations to support the separation of duties. So um, that's how that's how we've defined it. That's our control in our fake environment. Our related controls, you can see them on the screen here. There's no enhancements and there's no references for you to look at. But when we do dive, when we do, we do dive into the actual assessment. It's when the assessor rolls around, right? The assessor is going to determine does the organization define the duties of individuals to be separated? In our case, we said those folks that are creating accounts, and that could be network or system accounts, system administrative functions, and network administrative functions, and then also those folks that audit. So we separate those things, right? So do we document them? And then do we actually separate organizationally defined duties of individuals, right? So there's something we can look at the document, we can make sure that they're defining, hey, the system administrator and the auditor need to be different duties. Now let's go out and see if they're really doing that, right? Do we document the separation of duties? That's 5B. And then we do, do we define information system access authorizations to support separation duties, right? So what are those access authorizations? What are we talking about, right? What things, um, what things, access authorizations, do we want to make sure are supported in this in this separation, right? Things like account creation, account deletion, um, elevation of accounts, those are things we'd want to think about. So in this case, we do have examine, interview, and test as test methods, and the objectives are similar to what we've seen. We're going to look at access control policy, procedures. We're going to look at uh, any other documents that support the separation of duties. Uh, we'll interview people that are responsible for defining those definitions, and we'll talk about people that have administrative functions and security functions. And then obviously we'll test the system. If I'm an administrator, can I go in and create account and then delete the, the proof that that account was created? Can I modify the, uh, the fact that it, was, that, it was, that it was created? Can I hide that from audit? right that's a big thing that's a big thing we're talking about that's really that's guys that's all there is to this control that's that's it but it's a big one this is a big one so we think about this this has been around a long time this this is an old business rule this rule existed back when folks would write checks and they would go in to the ledger and they would be the person that reconciles 
the checkbook, right? So they would they would be the person that writes the check is the same one that gets the bank statement. So in in business, you want to make sure that the person that is writing the check is not the same one that's reconciling the bank account. So one person writes the check, another person gets the bank statement. That way the person checking the bank statement can be like, where did this weird check come from? Um, other places have done it a little differently. Sometimes you could have one person writes the check, another person signs the check. And then another person, maybe a third person is the one that reconciles the bank account. Same thing we're talking about here. The person that creates the, the, the system accounts, elevated accounts, the people that do security functions generally are not the same people that are auditing those functions. That's important. A lot of people have come along while we're going through the little the, the control. Paul's came in. Good afternoon, folks. Hope we're doing great. Remember, Paul's over across the pond, uh, Scotland. Uh, Beth's here. Good morning. Good to see you, Beth. Hopefully no conference call today. Maybe you got the day off. And it's happy Friday. Some folks got extra day off. Great thing. Mike Brown was here saying, oi, oi. Hopefully uh, resumes went out okay for you. So that's what we got to talk about. That's our control for the day. AC5, separation of duty. You got to keep them separated. I'd play that cool song, but I'd get a copyright strike, and that'd be a bad thing. So, as again, as you go on today, uh, celebrate the new holiday. We've done, it's a new federal holiday, Juneteenth. Um, take care of your friends, family, co workers. Take care of each other. Uh, Mike Bravo's here. We'll say go get some. And, uh, I know it's kind of been hit and miss. I've had some, some meetings, some appointments in the morning. Uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes I just, I got I to pull the plug. And uh, that's why it's important to subscribe and hit the bell. That way you'll know when they're coming. I'll try to get the notification that we're doing a live stream the night before. Uh, in all cases, I, I want to do that. Because some days I just might not be able to be here. You know, yeah, you guys know how that is. You know where it is. Holding down the whole nine to five or the seven to seven or whatever you guys are doing. I know lots of hours put in in this world. So take care of each other. You guys know this is a community. I love, I love to see Beth. Howdy. Howdy. That's right. So go out there. Enjoy your Friday. Have a good weekend. It looks like a nice one out here on the East Coast. Hopefully it's nice where you're at. And with that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign off and we'll see you on Monday. If you can, like the, like the video, like the channel. You know it helps. helps the logarithm. It's all about metrics, right? So, anyways, we will see you guys, hopefully bright and early on Monday. Enjoy the weekend and be safe out there. Good morning, Michael. See you pop in there with the good, good logo. All right, anyways, I'm out of here. I'm going to go get my day started so I can get done with work and maybe get out a little early. You guys be safe out there, and we'll see you Monday.